I'm Joe. And I'm Jason. And welcome to the Bill Break Repeat Shop. This is where it all happens, this is where all the videos are made, and where the cool builds are created. So kind of just two brothers, we started off with our buddy Daniel back in 2015 building things, and then in 2017 we started our YouTube channel and we just never looked back. So our friend Daniel started out going to car shows when he got a Mustang and he brought me along. Eventually we started bringing Joe along and we decided we wanted to build a go-kart. We saw this video on YouTube of someone making a wooden go-kart where they steered with their feet and back in 2015 that was the first thing we ever built. Honestly probably one of the first times we even used power tools. We named it Mayhem after Roadkill's General Mayhem. Painted it army green. And I mean, I think we made every mistake you could make when building a go-kart on that thing. The front, well, I guess, axle was wider than the rear. Our chain was like five feet long and <laughs> flopping all over the place. I mean, it just was not set up right. But the good thing was made out of wood, so we would just chop pieces off and put it back together. And I think everyone who rode it crashed it. Yeah. But it taught us a lot of things and just kind of got our foot in the door when it comes to how to build a go-kart. And after that, we decided to get a welder and make a full frame go-kart with a Harbor Freight pipe bender. But uh, the end result on that actually kind of exceeded our expectations. Yeah. And that was one of the things where we really kind of got inspired to build more stuff and we felt like we could really handle bigger builds. It was not a very good go-kart, but it was a lot of fun to drive around. And we made kind of a little slideshow of it where we posted that on YouTube in 2017. So uh, we'd always started watching like Cars and Cameras, Red Beard, Rather Be Welding, all those guys. And so we kind of looked at them and we're like, okay, this is something that people are interested. This is something people can do because it's a pretty niche little market. And we posted that video, kind of didn't really think about it, but after checking up on it a couple days after, I guess the algorithm took hold of it and it was getting a pretty good amount of views. Uh, so then we decided, you know, maybe this is something we want to keep pushing at and I guess I guess we're go-kart YouTubers now. And we started buying our parts from Go Power Sports. And we're lucky that we're here in Frisco, Texas because Keller, where Go Power Sports uh, warehouse is located, is not too far away. So we were driving to the shop, picking up wheels and tires and stuff, talking to the guys, telling them about our YouTube channel. We had around 8,000 subscribers and we went to Go Power Sports and asked them if they'd sponsor us and they said, we're too small. So we went back, built a couple more builds, got more subscribers and they eventually sponsored us and we haven't looked back from there. So we're definitely really lucky that they were willing to do that, take a chance on us because it's really let us do some cool stuff and have some great opportunities. So how often are you guys here? Um, almost every day. Usually, almost every day, yeah. So this, is this a full-time thing besides uh, school? Uh, well, I have an internship and Joe has a full-time job. Okay. So after work, we come here every day, almost every day. We do, what do you do for your full time job? I work as an architectural uh, designer. I'm mechanical okay. engineering. Yeah. I think we kind of chose our majors a little bit inspired by what we were building and that kind of creative desire. So architecture helped me out. I learned a bunch of softwares, the Adobe suites and 3D modeling. So that really helps me with the designs. I design the logos, edit the videos, uh, the paint and body work, mock-ups. That's all really just super tied into what I do on a day-to-day -day basis at my real job. For me, mechanical engineering really goes hand in hand with all these go-karts we build. Before the channel, I was really thinking of being a doctor or something. So after we started building all these things, I realized I really enjoyed finding out how things worked and making things work how I want them to work. And you know, I've used a lot of my engineering knowledge in our builds. I use CAD software a lot. I'll design the tubes we want to bend know exactly how to bend it and get exactly what I want from the tubing bender. And things like that are really useful in designing our builds. Yeah, so we do like cars. We like working on them. Our channel's really focused towards go-karts, so we don't really film it too much. But, I mean, we have our 1965 C10. Joe has his 1999 Jeep Cherokee XJ. We've done a and couple Jeeps. Yeah, his 1957 FC150. It's a Jeep so, truck thing. Yeah, You'll we've see done, it later. Yeah, we've done a couple builds. We also had Daniel's old CJ, and we also did another CJ. So we've done a couple cars, a couple engine swaps, around four engine swaps. 
But really, uh, go-karts are better for YouTube because you can really just pop them out. You can do a lot of custom stuff and it's not as much of a time commitment if something goes wrong or you have any problems. Parts are a lot cheaper too. Parts are a lot cheaper. Shop, shop truck? Yeah, this is our shop truck. We use it for towing everything. We do all the road trips in it. It's honestly been very reliable. We know nothing about the history of this motor. We do know that it leaks and burns oil. But, I mean, Chevy 350s don't really care about any of that stuff, so this thing's going strong still. Nice. Put a uh, Tremec TKX transmission in here, got a five speed now, a new wiring harness, new gauge cluster. But other than that, this thing is exactly how we got it, and it's been running great. Do you have any other plans for it? Originally, I wanted to do an LS, but um, I decided that saving some money would probably be a better idea oh, yeah. at this point in my life. Right now. But eventually, I, mean, I can do that whenever. So. Yeah, I'm hoping to get a job at Toyota after I graduate. Right. I've met yeah, some people here. Super yeah, so he, he owns the uh, racing team that does most of the marketing for Toyota. And then he he's friends with an engineering manager at Toyota. So then I met the engineering manager from through him. I'll be a so most of the stuff we do, we have never done before. So for example, um, the turbo, or this deuce actually, this was the first time we'd really done any sort of wiring. So I'd never even looked at a wiring diagram before we started this, and this thing had some wiring issues. So I mean, we had a broken CDI. I mean, it was mostly small issues, you know, like the kickstand switch was broken. And you know, if everything else is right and it's just that kickstand switch, it's hard to find that that's your problem. So, you know, a lot of kind of research and development type things. For our turbos, we didn't know anything about that. So we've definitely been working through that. And um, yeah, rotary motors too. Yeah. We've never even seen one when we got that one. And then we had it fully seized up. We had to do a full rebuild and now it's actually pretty easy. I think that's the main message of our channel is we don't know what we're doing. Yeah. We look everything up, we do things on a whim, we test yeah. things out and see if they work. And you know, usually the end result is worth it and it yeah. usually ends up working out for us. So if you're it's willing, always, the path is always very fun. Definitely, if you're willing to put in the time and the research, almost everything's possible as long as your engine isn't like totally garbage, so. The build we usually keep around the shop. We have a ton of fun driving these around. So we have our mini diff trike. This thing turns on a dime, is a lot of fun to drive. Wheelies all the time. We have our lovely Rascal right here. We got the front shock forks. And this thing's just a nice, easy thing to drive around and let friends drive if they want to learn how to drive a mini bike. And then the turbo rotary mini bike, one of my favorite things we've ever built. Still runs to this day, a couple years later, and you know, it's a blast to drive. My favorite build, which I'm sure is a lot of people's favorite build, is our rotary shifter cart up there. That thing goes 80 miles an hour really fast it can spin the tires from a launch it's a blast to drive also even though we stretched it six inches in every direction and just kind of welded pipe on there it still handles very well it's very controllable and predictable i just love being able to you know hit the throttle send it into a little drift and be able to just do exactly what i want i can position it where i want drift whatever it's just a blast I might be a little biased, but I think it's one of the coolest shifter carts on the internet. On the planet. Yeah. I mean, that engine is one of 2,000 ever built. So, as far as collectors for these uh, Saks rotary motors, Probably. That, that's the one you can't get. So we got really lucky picking that up randomly off Craigslist for 700 bucks, seized. Had no clue what we got, but it's awesome. Uh, for my favorite build, I think I'm gonna go with the rotary uh, mini bike switch it up a little bit. I mean, that thing is just a frame we picked up at Pate's from a friend to Go Power Sports, Tommy, and it was a chrome frame. We loved how it looked. We didn't really know what we were gonna do with it, but once we found the rotary motor on eBay, got it shipped in from somewhere in Eastern Europe, we knew they were meant to be. Put it on there, kept it kind of ratty and rusty. Um, the turbo, it just worked. I really can't explain how, but we haven't really tuned it too much or anything. We slapped it together. Started up first pull, ran better, we had a lot more top speed, so we were just like, hey, uh, let's not mess with it anymore, it's pretty good. But I mean, the looks of it, everything, it's just, it looks almost like something that would have come out back in the 60s by some crazy engineer or something, but yeah. we built it and uh, it's just such a cool showstopper. So this is our 
Ninja 250 swapped Manko Deuce. We added these hoops up front so we could add some big springs down here. We get a lot more flex. Go Power Sports rack and pinion. Just a lot of uh, cool upgrades like these lights and stuff. Ooh, it's a blinding. This is a 1974 Vanguard City car. It's an electric car, one of the first production electric vehicles. Uh, I think stock, the top speed was like 30 miles an hour. Had 3.5 horsepower, powered by horsepower. six car batteries that you had under your seat. Um, the body is aluminum, or the, the frame is aluminum, and the entire body is just one layer of ABS plastic. So I'm sure the crash ratings on these things are great. <laughs> um, yeah, our plans with it, if you see this 1,000cc, 150 horsepower sport bike right here, this is going to go in there. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of custom fabrication, but this thing should have the same power to rate ratio as a Mustang GT when we're done, so it should be pretty fast. And it'll be about 100 times sketchier. So. Yeah. With golf cart steering. <laughs> How'd you guys get this? Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, Facebook so I, Marketplace. So I skipped class jam. from college. My mom met me at the place with the U-Haul truck. We put it in the bed of the truck and yeah, I just drove it home, went back to school the next day. It was, it was a blast. How did you guys come up with your ideas? Usually it is scrolling through Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist, see something cool that we want, and then it's just, how can we make a video with this? Um, and then we just sometimes just try and come up with some fresh ideas for videos yeah. to make or like based off our old videos, ones that we think were really good, we'll go back and revisit maybe in a different way. Yeah, we're always buying engines and frames. So we'll have a frame with no engine, we find a cool engine. We have a cool engine, no frame, find a cool frame, kind of just goes like that. Yeah. Plug and play, pretty much. Yeah, it's the formula. First, we're gonna do a video just on how to buy a go-kart and just kind of get it running, bare minimum stuff. And then after that, we're gonna do a full vintage 60s style restoration because this is a 60s era bug sprint uh, vintage cart. So we got one already, but we're doing a West Bend 820. It's like an eight to 10 horsepower two stroke. It's that silver and black engine. Yeah. And I think we're gonna do dual two strokes on the back. Super vintage, super unique, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna scream. So here's a little tour of all the tools we use. So right here we have our mini lathe we got this off Facebook Marketplace and it's great for making kind of precise spacers and things like that. We have our swag off-road porta band table, awesome for making brackets. We have our belt sander, which is also great for making brackets. Right here we have our chop saw. We just started using that, it's from Evolution Power Tools and it is great for making repeated, ex extremely square cuts. Down here we have a bunch of random bolts in magnet dishes and a bunch of other random stuff, you know, and all of these tools, sandpaper and things. Over here is our main tool drawer. We got our, our very pretty organized ratchet drawer and you got a, you know, in there? a couple of them actually, and our, our mega wrench. From then on, we have a lot of our safety gear in this cabinet, as well as some kind of fabrication things. One of the things that gets the most use in the shop is our Texas Metal Works welding table. Got a pretty big one, I think it's four by eight. And I mean, we use it for all kinds of stuff, not just welding frames. It's great for building engines on. Just, it's great to just have a big metal table. And it was really cool that we found a guy who makes these pretty close to us here in Texas. So support a local business. We have our wrench wall with our welding helmets. Got the really nice Optrel and Hobart welding masks. And in here, we kind of just keep our filming equipment we got our fire cabinet here. This is where we keep all our fires. I mean, this is where we keep the fire from getting into. Got this nice little rolling stand. Lots of bearings and supplies down here. And up top, we organized all of our spare bolts by size. Makes it really efficient for when you need to grab a bolt of a specific size. There's another new tool we got is a Rogue Fab tubing bender. This thing's a great roller die system. It can do some, a bunch, so many different options and features for this thing. And then the old, ho this is our old Hobart. That's been with us for a long time. And this is our new Hobart multi-process. So we can do DC TIG, MIG, stick, all that good stuff. And it just all contained in one machine. And then back here, a Harbor Freight press, finger brake from Swag Off-Road. That's really good for making brackets. And then we have our Rogue Fab tubing notcher for frame builds and stuff. Goes great with the Rogue Fab tubing bender. 
So I know we just name dropped a ton of different parts and stuff, but this is what helps us make what we make and helps us do it a little quicker, more efficient, and better quality. So let's say money and parts are no issue. What's what's the dream project? Can dream. We stop here? Do you guys ever want to go aerial? Like an ultralight would be cool. I feel like that'd be the death of me though, so maybe not. <laughs> Yeah, definitely like street bike swapping, some racing cart frames. Racing carts are just a really good platform if you want to do a cool engine swap because, yeah. I mean, they're engineered frames. Like, they're not your typical yard cart. They have real steering and handling of real brakes. They're really fun. So as far as go-karts, really the only dream build part of it, I would say, for us at least, is rare things. Things that you can't really find or buy easily without spending a ton of money. So you can get a ton of cheap engines that make a lot of power, but the rare, you know, period correct things, if you're trying to do a restoration, that's where it gets a bit harder. One of the things we've really wanted to do is another amphibious go-kart. Yeah. Our first one did pretty good, but I think we can come back and do it a little better, um, take it back out to the lake. We try and keep it cheap. We try and find mm -hmm. as much stuff as we can secondhand. Uh, not eat up too much money buying like some brand new crate motors or stuff, you know, just kind of, mm -hmm. Do it the backyard way. All right, here's our loft. This is the editing hangout slash storage center. And it's just a nice place to come up and relax when we've been grinding on projects all day. So yeah, we have a couple of our you know nicer builds. Most of them don't have engines. Uh, so this is our 60s go-kart, which is actually from the 80s. We have our race mini bike, our cafe racer bike, and our little rascal. So most of these, we either took the engine off to build something else, or we're swapping the engines around and just kind of haven't gotten around to getting them running yet. But good storage up here. And then we have even more storage on our AstroTurf out here. And this is where we keep most of our mini bikes. We have an electric hoist up here, and we can hoist them up and just slide them back. And it's awesome. So in the back, it's our Yamaha MX-80. Pretty fun little dirt bike. It goes actually pretty fast for just 80 cc, and it looks really nice. We have this Rupp Roadster 2 that uh, I think we're gonna do kind of a resto mod restore on. And then we have our mini ATV. We got this thing, I think it was free. Put a bunch of bars on it, made it look aggressive, put a really cool electric start Tillotson on it. And yeah, this thing is super fun. So ever since we met the Go Power Sports guys, we've definitely been plugged into the network of people who are enthusiastic about go-karts, mini bikes, small engines. And I mean, the amount of people we've met that have offered help and suggestions, even in the YouTube comments or in just messages on Instagram has been amazing. So many people have, you know, that had that knowledge of what we needed have been able to reach out and help us get through some trouble spots. Mm -hmm. And we also sometimes will meet people when we go buy something off Facebook and you know, they've seen the channel or they, we show them what we do and they'll hook us up with somebody else who you know, has more stuff for us. So it always just, uh, it's such a welcoming community. Everyone's you know, just interested in what you, what you got. They're ready to tell you about what they got and it's just really uh, supportive and everybody just is wanting to have a good time. Another great thing the community has brought us is all the events. The Go Power Sports mini bike races are a ton of fun. We got to go to Pate. We met all our go-kart idols, you know, Redbeard, Cars and Cameras, Rather Be Welding. You know, we'd watch them when we started the channel and now we got to be friends with them. So it's really cool. We've had a lot of awesome opportunities and a lot of fun events we've gotten to go to because of this. Now that we're kind of wrapped up with college and school and all that, that was one of our biggest time uh, constraints with making videos. We have a little bit more time, but hopefully we'll be able to dedicate more time to this. Definitely stuff we're interested in, you know, keep growing it. Just keep growing the community because that's what it's really all about, just getting more people on mini bikes and carts and getting them into this amazing group of people. And everybody's so friendly, help each other out on their builds, give them, give them advice, you know, we're not really that competitive. Except for you, John. I'm watching you. It's a sketchy guy. <laughs> I'm just kidding, John's cool.